the guy went back and checked him like he doesn't really have like a black like, development tree like all of that because mm-hmm. even if you look at what just happened in tampa bruce arians moved over someone who's like he brought him with him and he actually has one or had since he's now stepping down one of like the most diverse coaching teams and pools like ever he had women that he brought with him when he moved to tampa he had people of color like he literally covered everything for what his coaching tree was is and how you know he made sure people were included in the process so they could get a chance to be there when he did step down to just move him right up mm-hmm. yeah it's i just sent it to you africa but the the short of it is 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 as with everything there's levels and it's but it's like crazy how deep it goes because I knew there were issues but I didn't know it was like that like that um but before we get too far into this let me say hello to those listening and welcome uh, to it's all good I am your host Latavia and back for another episode if this is your first time listening, welcome. If it's not, welcome back. Thank you. I appreciate you all listening. It's All Good is a weekly podcast where I share my journey and experiences in this thing called life, specifically adulting, and how most days I'm not a fan, but I'm figuring it out each day. I'm not an expert by any means, but I'm living it in from time to time. I have guests who come and help share and they share their experiences or their expertise. This week, I am, I don't have all the words to fully describe how excited and appreciative I am of my guests this week because these are two of my very closest friends and who are have a lot of similarities. And the fact that you all are seeing their faces, if and so if I need people, if you normally listen, I would encourage you to watch because this is a very, very, very special treat (laughs) that you get to see their faces. I'm also happy that I get to see their faces, but I'm happy to share that I have uh, Afrika Jemison. She's been on before and first time guest, Elizabeth Thompson. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Such a nice introduction. I know, right? I feel so old. Mama, I made it. (laughs) (laughs) No, but I really do appreciate you all because even before we started recording, that was one of the things of just like, I'm just like, oh, they're both here. They said it, but then they like, they actually showed up and we're here. But but yeah, that is half the battle. So we're here and I know they're not just going, you know, disappear on me in the middle of this, but um, I do appreciate you all. You won't do it. Um, I will I'm, put this. I'm gonna lean on the shield. You will not do it. How about that? Um, <laughs> but sorry, I digress. So one of the things that I do to start off each episode is what I like to call a gratitude moment, um, because one of the things that helps me get through each day in life is taking the time to focus on what I'm grateful for, whether it's a person, a thing, a place, whatever. Um, so as my guest, I will give you all the honor of going first. If you would just share something or someone that you are grateful for today or this week, doesn't have to be profound or deep, but just something. Uh, I'll let you go first, Africa. Okay. Well, I am grateful for Wi Fi. I have had such an ordeal in the last (laughs) day and a half that I've just, I I have. reaffirmed my appreciation of um, Al Gore's internet as they say and the Mm -hmm. ability to get it without being plugged directly into a wall it it makes a big difference we are very reliant on it even when we don't want to be exactly and you really realize that when you don't have it Mm -hmm. yeah because when you told me that I was like oh (laughs) and of course the timing the timing is always going to be so yeah it always goes out at the time we don't need it to but yes I'm I am grateful Elizabeth what about you I am grateful to piggyback off of it's not wi-fi but white noise machines my upstairs neighbors for the past three days have been engaging in activities that have been making lots of noise And I broke down finally 
and brought a and bought a white noise machine, which has been helping me tremendously not yell upstairs that they're loud and other things, which I won't say because you know, family friendly here. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for that because it has helped me block out the noise and focus on other things or be able to even do this and think clearly. So yes, I, I, I have not had a white noise machine in a long time, but they definitely make a huge difference. So I'm, I'm happy for you and I'm grateful for them that you were able to get this white noise machine. Cause I think it is, it is doing both of you all a great service that it, it, it is. was able to be obtained and it is being effective. I'll just leave it at that. So if you hear anything loud drop during this, it's them because you'll be able to hear. So don't worry. Oh, it's that kind of loud. Yeah, they they doing some activities. Is that kind of, they've done stuff where my ceiling fan has like literally falling. Oh, oh no. Mm -hmm. Such a peril. That's a problem. <laughs> that is a, that is, ooh, that's a problem. Yeah. I have upstairs neighbors that can get loud sometimes. Like I have had so many questions. I decided that they moved in and turned it into Gold's Gym. Um, mm. because that was the only thing I could come up with. Although I did not have any ceiling fans fall, I did have, you know, how they have the bar to secure your patio door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that has completely just fallen. And I'm like, oh. how did you do that? Or the patio doors will rattle. And I'm like, okay, so that's oh. a lot of activity. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I tend to leave people alone, but I went up there one day and was like, yeah, it's too late for all of this. And the people that came to the door, I was like, you're not the people who I've known to live here all this time. I don't know what y'all got going on up here. And it, even the explanation they gave, I was like, none of this is adding up, but it ain't none of my business. But what is my business is that it's too late in the middle of the night for y'all to be making all this noise. Y'all got chill out. Understood. Mm, that is. Living with people. I don't like it. Well, one star do, do not recommend only got one star because you got to give something <laughs> i love that review only got one star because you had to do something i love it no that i think the ceiling fan that reminded me of when the water heater or no someone else above me um was cooking and something caught on fire so there's i guess the the, the, the silver lining of it was that our sprinkler system worked but what was not pleasant was the fact that it started raining in my apartment. And yes. then I was like, and the crazy part was every time something happened in that apartment, it happened on my side. So Ooh. I could not use my room or like I was displaced in some kind of way because all the fans had to be pointed in my direction or in my room. But yeah, um, well, I feel like, I, I mean, I'm still a little bit on a high in terms of being grateful about our first Supreme Black woman being on the Supreme Court. Um, I have had various conversations with both of you all about our opinions and feelings about the Supreme Court and certain justices. So it's like, I'm still very grateful for that. But honestly, I am genuinely grateful for having you all on the show today, um, just because for one, I get to see you all and talk to you. Um, and I know that we talk and text throughout just in general, but it is nice to be able to see your faces because I have not seen either of you all in person since before the pandemic. Um, and- It seems so far, we had so, so close. I know. Like two years feels really long, but it's really not that long. It's not, but it is. Cause these years have felt like double um and yeah. in addition to that like I said these are you all are both some of my closest friends I went to law school with both of them and you know I always say I kind of take years on that next month oh oh yeah <laughs> that part <Ooh. laughs> yeah mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> I mean just had thank to share you. yeah you're right thank you for that um but what I was gonna say was the fact <laughs> 
<laughs> this is when you have to say, look, you know, okay. people went to law school because they didn't want to have to do math. Boom. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. That's very true. Mm-hmm. And what makes today's topic um, even more special, I would say, is because one of the things that we all share is our aversion to litigation. Although we have all done it in some way, shape, or form longer than we wanted to, um, but that we all at some point had an interest or desire in sports and entertainment um, as, and have all worked in it in some capacity and also just an interest in sports and as well as doing things outside of the typical box, the, you know, what people typically think of when they say they're going to law school or they're a lawyer. Um, and so kind of like I said with that for today's topic is, I kind of want to say racism in the NFL or the NFL and racism, but also nepotism <laughs> because um, I think we all played sports at some point. I don't run. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's what I said, I think. Okay, every and I both play sports, but the figure, <laughs> the figure skating counts, I definitely did that, but I definitely it's don't It's a sport. It's a sport. Okay, the figure counts then. I did something. You, you've boxed. I do, but boxing is fun because that does not involve running. Man, girl, that's short. No, that's shuffling. I don't, I don't know is, if there is a greater mean. exertion of energy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will gladly, yeah. gladly, gladly box, but I will not. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, that part. So, anywho, say all that to say that I don't know. I know I am nowhere near on the level of Elizabeth as a fan of the NFL or football. Um, I forgot to let you watch it, but I don't think we, I know that we're not like, oh, I got to watch the game. I can tell you everything. At one point, I was definitely that way with basketball. Um, I have honestly fallen off a bit. I think watching them and playing a bubble with the fake fans or the digital and virtual fans. <laughs> it just, it just, that was too much for you. <laughs> it was like, mm, mm, mm. can we just, let me just wait. It just it was too, 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 too K-ish. <laughs> Very much so. Cause I was like, oh, there's virtual heads. Yeah. And the there bubble oh. was, was definitely like, what is happening here? It was, and it was like they kept. It was the spinning. metaverse before the metaverse, <laughs> right? And it was like they kept putting the camera on them, like they were really. And I'm like, mm-hmm. crowd participation is very different yeah. when you're. But anywho, <laughs> I was able to say, like I said, what I wanted us to talk about was, um, and for those of you listening, if you have not heard about all the, I mean, over the years, there's been several different types of scandals or issues with the NFL, but more recently, and what is currently going on, I would say is the issue, the issue with Brian Flores suing the NFL. And the fact that one, the fact that he sued, <laughs> then also things that have happened since he sued and just all the things surrounding it. And so, like I said, because I'm aware of it, it's definitely interesting to me, but Elizabeth is like a fan in a way that I don't always understand, but not just of the sport, but of the the business and the ins and outs of it, especially from the legal side of it. So, and then Africa also has, like I said, interest in, in um, experience in that. So I thought I couldn't think, honestly, I couldn't think of two other people that I think would be better to have this conversation, especially since we've been having it <laughs> via text. <laughs> And it was like crazy because one day I think both of you all sent me something about it. And it was like within hours of each other. And I was like, hold up. How about what would you be willing? So thank you. But yeah, so we both I honestly got suckered. And here we are. Yes. And no. And we willingly agreed to this. Right. Yeah, I was about to say there was no um um undue influence. See what the pandemic do to you. Mm-hmm. COVID brain. <laughs> well. <laughs> I work from home. I need interaction with people. <laughs> so thanks. You guys both go have gone back and have coworkers that you work with. Well, I'm not back in. I haven't office. been in this week though. But say I haven't been in this week. I go in tomorrow. Yeah, on we work day on day. one day a week, but we even stopped doing that once the numbers surged. 
we, oh, didn't, okay. we stopped doing the one day but we'll oh, probably wow they stopped you day. again mm-hmm. See, i need us to stay open I, I mean i just wish we could get this together like be responsible mm-hmm. adults that wash our hands and listen i was gonna oh, say now you we, this is gonna end up being a completely different topic if we go down this road because <laughs> you want to know what i got some opinions about that <laughs> you got a, got a lot of hope with that i just want like, us to be responsible right uh, if that were the case we wouldn't be here right now people would have been doing that ahead of you know beforehand it wouldn't have spread the way it did it wouldn't have listen people wouldn't have been pushing back people really mad that they had to wash their hands what were you doing all of this time before the, the fact that and, it, so and that's the question. It came out saying they didn't wash their legs or their whole body also and and it highlighted the 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 cultural differences i'll say it that way of personal space because mm-hmm. most of the time we were keeping at least six feet distance in lines and stuff it's anyway well we was asking for 50 but you know right right back 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 <laughs> but you know but with them it was like like you know you'd be in line at the store and they'd be like hey and you'd be like Mm-mm. why 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 are you why do i feel your breath on my neck right I can't move or the people who literally thought that like injecting themselves with bleach was really going to work. Yeah. Like, let me get the lifestyle and the calls to the CDC. What? <laughs> people really thought that that was an option? I didn't think that was a real option. But you said- I was highly wanna... concerned that people thought that that was a real thing. But you want us to be responsible adults. But see, Listen, I, guess... I think that at some point we will get there. And people are saying, hey, some hand sanitizer, some, you know, that might be the day that Jesus comes back. I don't know. This is where I wish I was already a podcast producer because I would have started playing Indy Iris. There's hope right there. (laughs) Well, I'll see if I can add that. (laughs) (laughs) If I can figure out adding that, India, don't sue me, please. I just, right. (laughs) Homage to you is not monetized right now. It's, it's truly just out of, you know, love and respect. Um, but, okay, but in all, uh, let me, before we have this whole- uh, <laughs> Right, we gotta stay focused. Because we, <laughs> uh, um, just, but more, more ridiculousness, I think would be the, the right word um, about this Brian Flores lawsuit. You all have both mm-hmm. read it in its entirety. That's a question. There's an issue for you right there. Um, we were talking about issue spotting. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you all both read the complaint in its entirety. I didn't have the capacity. Um, so I'll give this disclaimer for those if you have seen it, heard about it, or if you haven't read it. It is not your typical complaint that you would see or read in a lawsuit. So this is not the norm. Um, It formatting wise, structurally content, just none of it. But it is similar to me. I got like a tell all book vibe from it because it was, I got time and I wanna make sure y'all know everything. But for you, since you all have read, I guess, what were your, I guess what was your initial like reaction or thought when you heard about the lawsuit and then seeing the complaint? <laughs> I was just like, when I first heard about the lawsuit, I was like, come again, say what now? Like, oh, this is getting good. I need to, right. do I need to set up my Google alerts? Like that's, <laughs> that's what pretty my- much because and I got excited because of the basically the gall that you have to have to go ahead and sue the NFL um and then to try to form a class um and and just to completely buck the whole arbitration thing like that that right there that got me excited I I really recognize that all of my nerd is coming out but um you know that like like I said just on the surface that right there did it for me so that's when I was like mm-hmm, tell me more so. right 
Like, oh, you got nerve. Mm-hmm. I think that was my thought as well because I was I was trying to figure out how he skipped so many steps to get to that point <laughs> because that's not a black how man, no less. Exactly. Like, it's not how it should have gone at all. And I was, I was just so, I didn't understand it, but I said, oh, so, so I said, this will be interesting because I mean, clearly if you just look on its face, you could see that there's, there's an issue there. I mean, you don't clearly have that number of retired players who happen to all be black and then say, you can't find coaches to coach C32. Like that in and of itself is a little bit strange. So I could definitely see how you could get to the point of maybe there's something not right here, but Mm -hmm. the way in which this was done, which I don't really think just in my opinion was very well thought out from the aesthetics of it to the actual complaint and the legal side of it. I don't, I think this was a knee jerk reaction to not being happy with a result, not so much a well thought out plan and an actual approach to get change or the change that he was alleging that he wanted to get. I think this was more so I'm upset about my job and because I'm upset about my job, I'm then going to do this. And then to then ultimately come back and take a position with the employer that you said you like there was an issue. It just the whole thing didn't strike me as something that I thought was a well thought out legal strategy. I would have gone about it way differently. And even who was hired for counsel, like if you're going to assess that you're in New York and you know, you can't find people to one adequately do their job, but you know, factor in all the other factors that were missing from that equation, which were literally like Instagram timelines and like Twitter timelines were literally just going like, what is this man doing? Why? That was very um, PC. I'm just, <laughs> what? Um, you said it. I am. I am. I'm proud of you. I'm um, working hard on this as a skill set because you know I struggle every day. Well, I. That's why okay. I was sitting here. I'm, like, I'm tracking oh. now. Okay. I. I was just like. I'm just saying. So okay, she said aesthetics of it all. Right. I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> right. In case you are not aware, and this is your first time hearing about this case, aesthetically, Brian, Brian Flores is, is he? He's Honduran. Honduran. Mm-hmm. But one drop rule in America, you know, you appear to be Black. So for all intents and purposes, he Today, is- For this case, yes. He yes. Is in that. this situation- mm-hmm. For this case, he identifies as Black or African American. Well, they say people of color in the complaint, though. But yeah, oh, just people. but just to be, but the way it was That's, presented, like the media might be. Well, able yeah, because that was how, and I didn't, I didn't know anything about him because I don't keep up with co- that many, co- well, the NFL or coaches like that. I didn't know about him, but when I first heard about it, it was oh, a black, man, a black coach was looked over you know essentially blatantly not so he's now filing suit and trying to start a class okay cool let me get the first day black history month too don't don't forget that first day black right and like you said the way that now whoever the pr people were now they was on it because like oh we're gonna get them this how we're gonna do it we're gonna get the public we're gonna get public opinion all that stuff the outrage because like i said first day of black history month a black man is suing the NFL because we we saw how things played out with Colin Kaepernick and him suing and then everything got settled and we still don't know like all the the ins and outs of it but then as you have a law firm and or legal team that is full of people who are not people persons of color um like none no pepper flakes anywhere in there that I could see um but uh, allegedly or supposedly this is a firm that's very well connected I should say maybe I still don't know but I just I imagine there had to be something but like you said when you were talking really what it made me think of was the whole was it Byron Allen with Mm -hmm. his case against Comcast which I talked about it on the show I was real hype like oh he's challenging this but then it's like hold up 
you basically, because you were upset about a deal that did not go your way, you used the system and essentially hoodwinked your community into thinking you were doing this for the greater good and got everybody on board and took something to the Supreme Court that has a much larger impact than your case. And then when people stop looking, oh, okay, I'm gonna just work this deal out on my own over here on the side. I'm good now. Forget, forget about that. And that's kind of what I, like, I, I feel that this situation with Brian Flores is similar, especially because like you said, he, oh, I'm gonna sue y'all. But oh, by the way, I'll still take this job over here. So what's the issue with that? What's the, what is the issue? Why, why do you, like even you said from a legal strategy, Elizabeth, and even you, Latavia. So what are, and of course, I'm not saying that I, I think it was the right thing to do or not, but what, what's so problematic about him taking the job? I, mean, I just think from the most basic level, if you have an issue with an employer, you leave the employer or a discharge, however it is, and then you come back to the employer. The question to me would be, well, if we were really that bad, why did you come back? Now, I do understand the NFL is clearly, it's a singular thing. There's no, I mean, the XFL, I guess, is getting its legs back at some point. It will be a functional league down the road, but there's really no competitor. So it's not as if, you know, you can leave Apple and go to like, I'm going to now be over here with Samsung. Like there's nothing comparable to the NFL. So I do understand the need or the want to go back if that's where you want to be. But I think it, it weakens the argument that, you know, it's such a horrible place. We're such a bad employer. And also, and I mean, and to his point, it may help that he took a position that isn't a head coach to say, hey, I couldn't get a head coaching position. So that may also help him as well. Not that that, is to be ignored because obviously he didn't come back in a head coach capacity and he went to Pittsburgh, who obviously, if you're talking about the Rooney rule, would be fundamentally like they're the foundation for most of this. But just in terms of coming back to me so quickly, like if you were so upset and disturbed by how they treated you to go back so quickly, kind of to me makes, makes an argument. And then to see who they hired to combat this is a whole nother layer of an issue, but we haven't gotten there yet, so. No, tell them, tell them who, who was hired. Loretta Lynch is going to be one of the attorneys defending the NFL, mm -hmm. which depending on where you fall and what comments you've seen on Twitter and everywhere else, people are really um, animated and emotional about that. Right. I was going to say, okay. I don't think it, it, regardless of where you fall, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's a huge deal. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, yeah. but there's, but the people are on polar opposite ends of the spectrum as to how they feel about that. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And I mean, and, and it is interesting for a person whose goal was to always fight discrimination to now be fighting the discrimination case for the NFL. Mm hmm that I so when that this case just gets more interesting every day it it uh it, it, yeah it's, it's it's good as reality tv I guess because it is reality um but I guess the other thing to to those points do you or if at all um how do you reconcile so like with the Loretta Lynch thing right so of course we deal with the every day we're looking at especially on social media you look at people trashing lawyers that especially that used to be either district attorneys or pds um about their records against black people people of color bipoc whatever how whatever you were classifying people as these days um and not taking into consideration the fact that it's still a job and it's still there are certain things that are already in place that they have to uphold that basically everything isn't necessarily a direct representation of your personal beliefs like you know the disclaimers that they put at the end of tv shows um 
that and then also with the whole Brian staying well taking a job so I guess the other thing is so aren't the teams individual employers they're not when you work for a team you work for the team you don't work for the NFL correct it is a team separately and apart yes because the teams make up the league right but, yeah well I'm just saying so I guess because you know this is what we do we <laughs> we're wordsmiths um <laughs> He technically didn't stay at the same job, um, but even if he did, I guess, so when you look at other, I guess, what we, I'll just say other EEO cases, do you think it weakens their case to, to stay at that job or are you, is, is this just with this one, are you saying if you think it weakens the case? Like, do you, do you think that across the board? I don't think that across the board, I think the way that this was packaged just made it look so, it made it look very strange, in my opinion, for him to go back, for him to be willing to engage so quickly thereafter. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, each team is definitely separating apart, but it's still ultimately, I mean, the league is the league. Mm -hmm. So, I think to that point though, like you said, in EEO across the board, I think even if it's, I think you mentioned Apple before, like if someone's working in Apple and they file a discrimination case, came, mm, claim or even like some type of wrongful termination, whatever, um, and then maybe they get a job in a different department or division, I think, and it's not an automatic, oh, your case is done because you accepted employment. I think it, to me, it's more of it, it opens the door to weaken your case. It's not an, not a matter of it automatically weakens it, but you essentially just gave you gave your opponent something to kind of hang their hat on of like Elizabeth was saying, of if it was so bad, why would you do this? If you have such a problem with the system, why are you still trying to be in the system? Which I feel like the same has been said about Colin Kaepernick and the fact that he still wants to play in the NFL and that he's still I think he was supposed to have had a meeting or a tryout yeah a week or so ago because I feel like people have said the same about him of like well you're saying that this institution this league is problematic and it's some it's systemic so if it's so bad why do you still want to do it of course I don't think that says it's um it's now an unwinnable argument Mm -hmm. and this case is moot but I do think it's and like I said, I think I agree with Elizabeth. And just the way, <laughs> the way it was all presented. And even if you go like Africa, you know, the principalities of the matter <laughs> of just, <laughs> it's, the, it's the principle of how you all say this, but then turn around because it looks, this is good for you. And even to the Loretta Lynch situation, like you said, oftentimes we, are, we have a job this is my job, I'm doing my job, who I am, what I look like, how I identify, to an extent, sometimes that has to be checked at the door, because I have a job to do. Now, I don't believe that that is the current case with her now. I think there's a lot more choice involved, right, in, and in this case, um, so it's, I just it's interesting I guess I'm very curious to see how it plays out even like you said from the standpoint of he's trying to um bypass the arbitration requirement I kind of want him to win just because I want this to go to court so I can de- continue you know, this is gonna be fun to watch so let me ask this so say this drags on and next season he gets a position as a head coach some like somewhere then what happened? Like then what would happen with the case? I mean, it still proceeds because, and I think this even goes to the the question. And and like I said, I'm not asking these questions as if I'm I'm not saying what I that I feel like is true. I'm not even saying I'm playing devil's advocate because he don't need no advocate. However, these are all things that I think about, uh, which is often part of my problem because I can see all sides of so many things and I end up being indecisive. But um, 
So what about the fact? So even with the like the Colin Kaepernick thing. So yes, the system is broken. There's a problem with the system. And I see the argument of, well, why do you want to be a part of such a broken system? But also to your point, there's only one NFL. And if I want to, if I love football and I want to play or coach or just somehow be around it at a, on a professional level, this is what my option is. Um, and even to the point, if there were competitors, it's still like, if this is still the organization that I believe in, I just see that it's flawed. Why do I need to run from the problematic system? It's, when the system is broken, the system needs to be fixed. It doesn't need to be abandoned and left as is. So, I don't know. I, I definitely do think that, I think that this case, again, I, when I first heard about it, before I read anything, saw any of the interviews, I was really excited because I thought this case was going to shift what coaching looked like or even what front offices look like because that, that's a completely different issue mm -hmm. of how front offices are structured and their lack of diversity with regards to race and with gender. That they it's not necessary I mean it's getting better it's not where it was before but right. it's not, that but it's definitely not as reflective of the world or just in general as it should be right it's not even representative of the very organization it's a part of exactly and it's it just it's not there yet but so I, I really thought that this case again although there were some steps that were missed in getting here <laughs> I thought this was going to be a really good case to put forth because it would shine light on the fact that there really is this disparity between, you know, the number of head coaches that happen to be of color and then just the overall dynamics because they always have the argument to be a coach, you should be a player, although that's not always true. But right. if that is the argument that they want to put forth, then you would think that a byproduct of that, your coaching staffs will look a lot more like your team. Right. Just because they would be your retired players now being able to come back and do other things as they're retiring and transitioning out of playing. But then reading the complaint, watching the interviews, I just can't, I don't know. I'm not sure if it will have the impact that was initially hoped for. I know that people are joining on and like more coaches are coming on to, and, and it could be now turn into that and morph into that and I hope that it does change something but again I think the initial rollout was really was rushed and kind of spotty and just the delivery and the messaging of what they were trying to accomplish and how they're trying to accomplish it and see I think it was done like that deliberately hmm. now admittedly I hope it was done like that deliberately <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I hope y'all thought this through because <laughs> if not ooh, buddy. right because like I said out the gate looking at the complaint I was like what like I wish this is the how fact that they just dropped it. pictures into it at one point they didn't even have that as like an, a, no like exhibit. an exhibit like an attachment <laughs> as like anything like please refer to exhibit whatever mm -hmm. it was literally just it was just boom Wrapped in there like boom. it was like getting an unexpected news <laughs> boom like I now what like, reading that I was like oh maybe I could do this I was like, can you imagine if we had turned that in our 1L year if we had oh. dropped that in our 1L year we wouldn't have been back our 2L year you'd have been escorted out that day like what do you mean like, excuse you what is this <laughs> you don't belong here like you are not our, of our ilk so like they're like, they're like you, you don't go here anymore. You did right. not pass. Do not collect your $200. You did not pass go. Please right. go home. And, and you won't be getting any other degrees here either. So no. don't even try not, that. Not at all. But that's what tripped me out is because this is, this firm is not, it's not like they're new. They're not just figuring it out. They're charging a couple pretty pennies. And this is what you submitted not even on a state level, like this is better, like. Mm -hmm. But that's why I say like, I possible? think it was deliberate. I don't think it was, cause if, if the complaint, like you said, it's, it is almost salacious. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like to me, 
when I read it, I was like, okay. And then especially like the repetitive nature of some of the stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, they just wanted to make sure they got the story out because this complaint is going to be public record until we as a society decide that we're going to change how we handle these things. Um, and I think it is because of the, the, the opportunities, I'll say, um, for them to lose the case because so let's let's keep it a book just because you might really be interviewed only because of the Rooney rule however it could be a, a reason other than you being black or of color or a woman or anything that somebody else was already hired you know what I'm saying so like I think it was it's a it's a, and even the fact like I've only seen well I won't pay attention to one interview and he said like <laughs> they were saying like we want this to go to court like we don't want to if we didn't want to go to arbitration we wanted this to be heard like basically we wanted to get the word out so I think that's why it's being done that way I do I think they do see opportunity for it to be unsuccessful or at least to cast doubt um and so they're like but we need to get this story told there's way too much history which I appreciate it because um, it, that part did answer some of my questions about the league and how we got to where we are now. Um, but there was really no, I'm not going to say no reason for that. Cause there was, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like I said, I think this was just used as a vessel to out the league, basically, like no matter the outcome of the case. So that's why I say I think it was deliberate and I hope it was deliberate, but I think that it's, it's kind of in that vein. I hope it was too, but I guess to that kind of thinking that point, it's, and I now I almost wonder, like I said, if it was a part of the strategy, because nowadays we know that the courts still move very slow and, you know, and the law does not, the law is still trying to catch up to the rest of the world and so it's almost like they were like okay we have to play this out in the court of public opinion and the court of law so let's put it all out there and make sure that it's circulated let's do this let's make sure we file it on the first day of black history month let's get the hype up we're going to play into people's emotions and their hopes and fears and all these things because we want to make sure that we get people talking about it and maybe that will influence the court whenever it gets to it to my knowledge, it hasn't been dis- thrown out yet. Mm-mm. So it's like, as crazy as it is, they, I guess they do know something. <laughs> they, they knew something or they get real lucky. going to be thrown out just for the record. I think you if don't, it was, I don't, I think if it was going to be thrown out, it would have been thrown out at the first oh, no, I, th- I think they're going to go. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, I yeah. definitely think that it's going to go. I just, I wonder if it will be I wonder if they'll get to like settlement talks and discussion. Like I'm trying to figure out, I guess, what exactly the ultimate goal is here at this point. Is the goal to actually change the system? Is the goal to just tell everyone who didn't already know, which I don't know who that would have been if they actually watched football, that there was an issue there? A lot of people I'm just, didn't know. They, they, they never knew. Most of the fan base don't know. Or they don't care to know. Yeah, like let's keep it a buck. Like, like you said, you can look at it and there's some glaring things there, right? But it's not, if if that were the case, Cap taking the knee wouldn't, wouldn't have grown into the issue that it did. Like people know, they may not know, but they know. Yeah. They don't, you know what I'm saying? They don't know, but they know. So like, they may not know the specifics of the history. Like I didn't until I read the complaint, but you know what I'm saying? Like, they could see that there's obviously some disparities here. Yeah. They see them the same way that they see the disparities in America. That is just not a thing. It's not a thing in their world. Right. And until it happens to, essentially until it comes to their door or it somehow has like, they see some reason to take a personal personal investment in it then it's just there and it's probably oh I love this team I watch them every Sunday 
and that's it. And when I turn, you know, when the game's off, the game's off and keep it moving. Cause even with the, what is it? Are they officially the Washington commanders now? Yes, they are the commanders now. Yeah. So, but even with that, all uh, the people. <laughs> So they just had something else pop up for them, right? So, what's the show with the with the red little red Riding Hood costumes? The Hulu show. Uh, um, Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale. Yes. Um, yeah. I was like, this is what they chose after we had Handmaid's Tale. Now they want to be the commanders, like <laughs> making bad decisions. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that because that is. Right. Oh, and, and they just like they literally just had some news dropped about them again today, too. Man, listen. And listen, I, I'm a, again different podcast for a different day, but like I'm not so sure that we not headed towards the world of the handmaid still. So that's why another reason why I'm like, really, y'all gonna be commanders now? Okay, okay. Uh, I right. see you. You're gonna be hiding out in the open. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Notes have been oh. taken. <laughs> I, and that and that would be a whole nother topic for a whole different day, which we can literally <laughs> go, right, we can go all of it on. We can start putting stuff on the calendar. <laughs> yeah. so, y'all just let me know. I'm here. I'm ready. But no, it started you a whole problem. <laughs> no, I welcome that problem. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. It was all good just a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's, I guess it's, like I said, to me, it's just, even kind of thinking back to the whole thing about people who have stuff to say about Kaepernick still want to play, or those who object to Ryan Flores accepting a job in the NFL, like at the end of the day, like you said, this is the sport, I, this is what I love, this is my career, this is my profession, so I still love it despite its flaws. I feel like that is the case. I knew for me, oftentimes, of my, I feel like my my relationship with America. Mm. And, yeah. and <laughs> it's, there's been several times I was like, mm, if such and such happened, I'm moving. I have not left this country once. I go visit. Ain't even busted the grave to move. <laughs> right. I have not. I did. I did do an interview for a job in the, in the, in the, uh, in the Caribbean and I was considering it but push come to shove like I have not taken any real steps to remove myself from America because at the end of the day as messed up and as many issues that we have this is where I'm from this is what I know and what I know of other places and I'm still picking it and I still choose to be here and exist and work within the system even the three of us being lawyers it's certainly not a career field or system that was designed with us in mind and I know that we have all dealt with our our share of issues in this journey to Mm -hmm. you know getting to law school getting through law school and then even in our careers of trying to get to where we are now so it's like the struggle is real the real and it's like and I've had conversations with both of you almost like why am I doing this why why are we still like listen why do I still do this I missed some opportunities to be down in the valley where the girls y'all know the (laughs) world right like and so it's like in that case as much as I am as much as like the initial, like, I guess, hearing about it, the shocker, like kind of the disappointment of, dang, I thought it was going to be this, like, you gave me hope of like, oh, you bought, and I guess in some respects, we put that on him, on Brian Flores, Mm -hmm. in the sense of, oh, we filed this, and you did this, and so because we were all, I think, collectively, like, oh, somebody's really challenging, like, for real challenging the NFL, you got the nerve, you got the gumption to, to do this. And you know, the way it was done, it was like, oh, you're about to do this. And essentially you're going to become a martyr. You're martyring yourself to do this. This, and you know, similar to essentially what, in some ways I feel like Kaepernick has become with it, like he in essence sacrificed his career, but it's like, 
maybe that maybe Brian Flores was really like, look, uh, I don't like the fact that y'all did this. And the way he found out was really jacked up. Like, oh no, that was definitely you should know who you're texting. You should be careful. Yeah, right. And that so text like, the wrong person, the wrong thing. But I definitely right. think, and I mean, and I totally understand why if a job became available, why one would take it. Again, there's no other, unless he was going to go to Canada at this point, and that's not and the end of that one, like that is almost a divine. Yeah. You know, exactly. like if there is right. somewhere to go, that is where you go. Pretty Although much. I'm not a Pittsburgh fan ever in my life and never could be, never would be, but I do appreciate what they have done with regards to this area, just in moving it forward. But and in that vein, I don't I'll not die hard anybody um an NFL fan. However, home team, go pack go. (laughs) (laughs) No, I can't do that to myself because (laughs) the Raven in me will not allow that. Like the Baltimore in me will not allow that to ever be a thing. But I will again I can I can respect what has been done you can always respect what has been done and I can appreciate and I can definitely appreciate that and I I guess I do get it I just wonder I'm interested to see how that is used against him as this progresses because I'm I'm sure that they will find a way to use that to hurt him oh I'm sure sure that to help him in some way I'm sure they're going to try to use it to, to say that this, the um, lawsuit is moved. Yeah, like, I mean, and I feel like, so to me, I guess, to the earlier point is that if I, w- if I was in this to really win it, I would have done everything in my power to make sure that my argument was tight. I had no holes in my armor. Like, there's nothing that you're going to get to come back and say, we're going to invalidate this because of something that you did. I want it to be very clear on my end that I'm super tight. But there's also, we got three people right here um, and we got three different definitions of when, you know? So there's that, like, we don't really know what he set out to do. We don't know. Um, Or even like the comparison to Cap. Like, Brian had less to lose. He had already not gotten the job. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, and this, that might have his win might have been I need to be employed exactly and it could have been that this was the compulsion you know that he maybe he wanted to use this as a almost like a force their hand obviously the hands wouldn't be forced but you know what I'm saying like because a lot of people get scared and be like oh no they're suing us and maybe they'll drop the suit if we go ahead and, and hire them back or give them the job they want you know I don't I don't know I'm just throwing stuff out there but I don't know. I mean, but, the NFL carry stuff, I would assume that they're just like, oh, right. we got time. So if you got right. time, we got time. We so we'll have time together. Seriously, I done had so many things that I'm like, oh, this would be a good place to insert that. <laughs> like, <laughs> you said we got time. I'm like, okay, money bag. <laughs> Look at my wrist. I got time today. <laughs> exactly. Like, there's time. So I... <laughs> Just like when you were talking about uh, Flores being a martyr, and she was like, we rooting for you. Y'all know I thought about Tyra. We were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. <laughs> but no, but that's the thing. And I think even, but no, wait, before I say that, going back, Elizabeth, you were talking about like before, like if you were doing this before you did it, you would make sure things were tight. I think that <laughs> speaks more so to who we are individually and why you're um, a lawyer yep why you're a lawyer you're a black woman and also how where we were trained and how because there's no the option to not be perfect exactly the of god was put in us to before you put anything out and before you sign your name to anything you better have checked double check triple check because what you think will get you in trouble but what you know will get you paid like heard that almost day one so and when you I read your complaint, you put the dot over every single letter in the word and the spaces because you don't want to mess up anything because typos are, you know, like Absolutely. a level of hell that you don't want to go to. Yeah, like it's so I think even the fact that that's how, like you said, all of us and I'm sure there's others 
um because I know in one of the I think y'all are in it the one of the face like the lawyer Facebook groups that was a big topic of discussion when it came out of just how problematic the complaint was and how it looked and just all the things all the steps that were not taken and maybe I don't think they were because I do think people went back and checked the procedural history but it's because my first I was like wait a minute didn't you need to check with the EEOC but apparently in New York that's not required but also they had made a reference in the complaint that they were going to be checking with yeah. the EEOC. So yeah, when I would actually even with that, like, like, so even like reading that, I apologize for cutting you off. Um, when I saw that, it did kind of make me think like, so y'all were in a rush to get this out. Like, like almost like he came to them on January 28th and was like, hey, we need to kick off Black History Month with this. <laughs> Or, or even the other way around. Because even like to your point about what we would do and what we sign off on, the other thing, and I learned this in practice, sometimes it don't matter. As long as it's not malpractice, it don't matter what you think is the best way. If that's what your client wants to do, then that's what your client does. Now, yes, people look at you as the village idiot, but you know that you would have been the village idiot to not do what your client wanted you to do. Exactly. Thank you so much for listening. There is still much to be discussed on this topic. Um, Africa, Elizabeth, and I could literally talk about this for days. But um, just as we have shared, there's a lot to be unpacked with this Brian Flores case. But please stay tuned for part two next week as we continue to the discussion about the case, the different dynamics, and just what we think may come and just how it parallels so many different aspects of life um out even on things that issues outside of the nfl but thank you for listening remember that regardless of what it looks like or feels like in the end everything is working together for your good because this is a journey and a process so until next time